Well, it's a beautiful day. It's Sunday morning, uh, late April 2016, and I'm headed over towards uh, Albany to uh, a get-together at an open house for a saw dealer, uh, The Cutting Edge. They're actually in Greenwich, New York, which is northeast of Albany by, oh, I don't know, half hour or so. So I've got myself probably a three or four hour drive to get there. This is uh, Route 206 headed east. And just want to make a couple of comments. The Cutting Edge has been around for quite some time. I would say they are the premier Domar dealer in this part of the country. And they frequent a lot of the other get-togethers and usually bring this just amazing collection of Domars, big and small, new and old. They also sell uh, Giant's Thread now. And really just a group of very, 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 very knowledgeable guys in the chainsaw world. Um, those people who live in that area are really lucky to have a dealer such as that. This is uh, Route 88 or Highway 88. Uh, it goes from Binghamton, New York up to uh, the Albany area. And I figure I'll just take a couple of shots of this. Because if you haven't been in central New York, you might think New York looks like New York City, which you see on TV. In fact, it's some of the most beautiful country in the world. We're getting in towards the uh, Albany area. We're about, what, 10 miles? Maybe 15 miles out. And, uh, Albany is at the top of the Hudson River Valley, basically. Now this is the site of the famous Saratoga Springs uh, racetrack, horse racetrack. They've got a museum here and everything. It's pretty spectacular. And actually, the last time I was up this way, um, well, was going to uh, the get-together, cutting edge. But the time before that was when my uh, youngest uh, stepdaughter was was uh, rowing for well, University of Buffalo at the time, and before that in high school. The rowing events were often held in the Erie Canal or some part of the Erie Canal. And um, we used to watch her row in Syracuse and Rochester, all the way up in Buffalo. Never got a chance to see her when she was doing things like Boston and Philadelphia and places like that. But uh, University of Buffalo had a pretty good team. They were actually ranked in the top 20 nationwide at one point. I think they were conference champs. And, 2010, but it's kind of an interesting story, not what I'm going to tell on video, but our high school didn't have a team, and uh, she had to go to a neighboring high school to actually start rowing. And there was some interesting politics around that. Just think of all the parents saying, hey, but who, wait a minute, who, who's this kid from out of town who's taking on a spot in the number one boat? But, Yep, she rode in high school, did quite well, and uh, that panned out into a, a scholarship for University of Buffalo, and she rode up there for the four years she went to school there. You know, both girls did college sports. The other one did polo, Cornell. Both did quite well for themselves. And this is one of the places where they did hold the regatta. I do remember the bridge. I think on the other side you'll see all kinds of parking area off to the left, if I remember correctly. And, yep, we were there. Son of a gun. Well, this is the cutting edge, and it is the premier 
Dolmar shop, probably in the northeast. Is that fair to say? Middle East. You guys have been in business since probably the, the country. Probably the country. Yeah, and uh, I think the biggest problem he has here with this get together is parking or lack of it because this event has got to be quite big. I'm going to take a few snapshots during the day, but this is more a social day for me than a, than a video day. But this is a shop that needs, needs uh, people to see it because it's pretty spectacular. See, some people have tree huggers around. It is Albany and all. Take a quick look inside. Oop. Put it to you this way, if it's Dolmar and exists, it's somewhere in this store. I know there's some other red saws there too, but I think yeah, Dolmar pretty nice. much. Oh my god, look at that. Is that the one you had down at Bob's? No, that's never left the store. It's brand new, never been around. Wow. One of two that I had never been around. That's pretty impressive. And I think six of those total, or six or seven. New old stock, 9010. That's pretty unique. Yeah, he says the shop's a mess, but I oh, think what shops it, are always a mess. They're supposed to be like that. I was going to say it has to do with being busy. Quite the rig. Saves a lot of work and it's consistent from chain to chain too. Yeah. It takes a couple minutes or a minute or so to set up. You know, the different style or pitch of the chain. Now you yeah, have a setup for three eighths right now. Right now I'm on three twenty five. Three twenty five. Yeah. An Oregon twenty one LP or twenty LP. Okay. Right there, was a little bit of inconsistency. The guy had filed it, so it barely touched that tooth because that tooth was a little shorter. If it ends up being more than one, I'll go ahead and reset it. How often does it have to go back and touch up the wheels? I generally dress the wheel once or twice through a chain. Depending on how dirty the chain is. If I clean the chains, it would be a lot easier. But That damn thing is cool. It's, it's a lot of money, but it saves a lot of shop work. I can be working or tuning the saw as the grinder's grinding away. Yeah. I set it up for a double tap. So actually one cut does the grind, one does a cool and clean. A lot of people only set up for the single tap because they'd rather save the time, but I'd rather have a more finished product. Are you going to be doing any 3.8s today? Uh, if I find something, yeah. I'll, I'm all caught up in the shop, but if somebody's got something out there they want to sharpen, they'll do it. Okay. I did one earlier there for Jeremy. Um, two questions I asked before. If you were to pick the best uh, Dolmars in their respective classes, of course, that's all of them, right? But as they match up with uh, some of the other saws, if I want to pick a couple for doing videos on. Right now, I'd say the 421, the 6100, and the 7910. Good, good. So, don't forget the battery one there. <laughs> is this in the same? This is a different chassis than the. That's its own chassis right now. No. I'd say the 6100 was the first straddle chainsaw from Dalmar. Okay. Which has been out for three, four years, three years. So this this here is going to be the future chassis, basically. For the... yeah, it's going to last off based off that saw. This has got a heavy duty air filter already engaged in. That's actually probably got the nicest filter on the market of anybody right now. As as I have to ask, does it do the same thing that John's Fred does by draw from the uh, flywheel area? It does pull a little bit there, but but starting that saw will be twenty times easier than any John. 
I say it does have the easy start. Um, is that a spring assist? Spring assisted starter, both the ignition is designed to fire off at a low RPM. Here's their sign. And there's the address. 447 State Route 29 in Greenwich, New York. Watch out for right next to this. Will it Just still? let me know if there's any airplanes coming. <laughs> well, I knew it was up there though. Wow, I can't even I see, can't it see it anymore. No. Yeah, right oh, there, there it is. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, Six hundred feet. Wow. The same thing we're using to control that is a popular thing that people use to control drones: mm -hmm. the Raspberry Pis, Beagle Bones. Batteries don't die right now. I got forty percent left. <laughs> It gets a 30% of the warm meat to land. Yeah, oh, that's good. Jesus, what is it now? Like 800? 
Wow. Way back when, way back, uh, the Furry Freak Brothers, the underground uh, comics, they had one, they're in the, in the car and they pull up to another car and there's a little straight looking guy there. And he's got his new radio, his, his jammer, his radio is uh, not a jammer, but a, you know, like a uh, transmitter. And he pulls up to the guy and he goes, watch this, you just turn the dial until you see the guy look down at his radio. And then you say, like, news bulletin, marijuana has been legalized <laughs> and, and has found to cure cancer or something like that. And then they say, hey, buddy, want to buy a lid? Only, only 200 bucks. <laughs> that, was, that was like 60s. Now he's going to bring it in for a landing, I think. Do you even bother to fly it if it's windy? You know that movie, uh, Independence Day, where they're all looking up at that damn thing? Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like us. Not for long. I get hungry just thinking about that. Looks like they do more than just chainsaws, too. Splitters and... Those are cool.
Yeah, that's what he does. He builds saws. Pretty damn good at what he does. Not just in the saw world, but in the uh, paving world. Who? Randy. Randy, you want to take a picture? Okay. Come on, guys, back in. Hey, everybody, back in. One more time. Time. <laughs> Just take a picture of Jeremy and we'll Photoshop him in. <laughs> So like I said, this was a spectacular day for me. I was, I was, I was very surprised, you know, at a lot of things that was here. And just a fascinating day. And then towards the end, um, I had talked a little bit about the cutting edge and, you know, of course, did a, a little bit of an introduction to the dealership. And I got a chance to talk to those two folks for a little bit. And that was the capper for me. They have a fascinating story, and I'm not quite sure how best to tell a story, but it's a story that needs to be told. And uh, it, it's, it's linked in with the story of Dolmar, the brand itself, because they really are uh, integral to the history of the brand. I believe they are the oldest, longest standing Dolmar dealer in this part of the country, if not the whole United States. And there's a reason why. And this is another thing, like with Bill Corey and his talent for, for uh, building devices, engineering solutions to very tough problems. Uh, these guys, uh, they, they've done something which is, is very, very hard to do. And it's not a slight against Dolmar because they're a fine brand. Sox Dolmar is a company out of Germany that has a, a very long and illustrious engineering history from motorcycles to chainsaws they've they've really been involved in a lot of stuff and uh, and Domar struggled in the marketplace and they have a good product I mean Domar saws are great saws that's no doubt and they're as good as the competition but here's the thing these guys have been selling and, and, and servicing Domar saws since the late 70s and for all the ups and downs in the economy and all the changes in the saw marketplace, they're still there and they're still doing a good job and they still have a strong customer base. That is an accomplishment because there are so many other people who started a business of some kind and um, expected to make quick money or whatever in, in uh, five years and they're gone. These guys have stood the test of time. They have a solid customer base, and for that matter, uh, they've developed a, a national, if not international, customer base through just simple hard work and ethics, good ethics, and understanding the product and being enthusiastic about the product, understanding what the product is designed to do, understand their customers. And this is a story I'd love to do a video on. I'm not sure I'll be able to. This is just sort of the commentary ending the day, so I don't know how much of this is actually going to get into the video. But it's just a great story of, 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 a, of a family that uh, was integral to a farm community and um, started in Agway and ended up selling farm equipment and chainsaws. And over a span of many years, developed a, a, a rock-solid reputation within the community through just hard work, good ethics, there's something special here. So it's more than a story about Dolmar. It's a story about these, these people, their family, and uh, effectively the history of their store. It's a very interesting story in my mind all by itself. Someday I hope to be able to spend more time there. So where is this all going? Um, bottom line was I had just an absolutely uh, fabulous time. This was a great day for me. It's certainly worth the four hours I'm going to have to drive home and the other probably 10 hours it's going to take to make a video. Uh, just, again, getting to know some of these people. They're great people. In this community, the Saw community, it's just a gr great group of guys. And, uh, and then being able to spend some time with, with the Fitzgeralds was just to be the capper. Because it's always about the people. It's